World of Warcraft needs to learn to move on, and I think Blizzard knows it too. Let's be real, Warcraft is old. Wait a second, older than that. Yeah, even older. There, perfect. World of Warcraft is coming up on its 20th anniversary, and the Warcraft franchise itself is near 30. At this point, Azeroth probably knows what a 401k is. With any universe that's been around for this long, the lore starts to pile up. We've got games, thousands of quests, in-game lore books, actual books, comics, cinematics, and any other type of media that can fit in big shoulder pads and oversized boots. There's a lot of story in Warcraft, and that can be a bit of a problem if Blizzard doesn't treat the universe in the correct way. In an effort to be fully transparent, I really like Warcraft, as you can tell with all this. And I also make an effort to keep this channel positive and respectful towards the lore, as I think it can be a bit over-hated at times. However, if you asked me what I think the biggest problem with the Warcraft universe is, I'd have to say it just can't let go of the past. What do I mean by that? Well, Warcraft is kept to a pretty small cast of characters over its lifespan. And while a ton of other characters exist, any major event happening is going to reach into this hat and pull out one of these core characters. But with a franchise that's coming up on its 30th anniversary, some of these characters are old. While I get that figureheads are deeply loved by players, having them stick around like this is starting to muddy their story, and that can only lead to the eventual completion of their tale to be unfocused. Let's use Sylvanas as an example. What used to be one of the greatest characters in the franchise now makes people very upset when you talk about her. Her story started out as the Ranger General of Silvermoon, who lost her life defending the city and or doing a sick-ass Bower's life. I have no time for games. She'd then be raised by Arthas and forced to serve in his scourge. However, through sheer determination and spite, she'd break free from his control and do everything in her power to see him meet his end. Along the way, she'd become the leader of the Forsaken, the undead citizens of Lordaeron who had met a similar fate to her a people who had been wronged and cast out and forgotten, pushed away by their still living kin. Genuinely grade A stuff, one of the best stories in the franchise. And then, we get him. Arthas dies. With her sole purpose to continue living gone, Sylvanas would become aimless. However, her people need her, so she continues on. Her story from here would evolve into trying to secure a way for her people to continue to exist by creating new Forsaken, instead of simply letting their culture die out. Again, great stuff. Eventually, we're going to start running into some problems, though. Because in Legion, Sylvanas was inexplicably declared the War Chief, which, let's be real, was probably mostly because of how popular she is. Now we need to move the story forward around that. Legion comes and go, and then we got Battle of Azeroth, where this story just goes completely off the rails. We start to see Sylvanas betray everything she stood for, saying things like she wants to kill off hope, or that the Horde are nothing a complete character assassination in record time. Then we have Shadowlands, where things just go to an entirely different level, which I don't want to dig into. But the point being, Sylvanas went from probably the most popular character in the franchise to the most divisive, because her story just keeps going. At a certain point, it should have reached a natural conclusion, with a new character taking the reins of the Forsaken. But instead, we now have this corpse of a story we need to deal with that will never totally be resolved. For that reason, for the health of Warcraft, we need to start letting go. A lot of the main characters are old enough to have kids, or already do. I think it's time we start passing the torch to some of these younger characters and let the old pillars of the franchise take a much needed break. Before we dig into the why though, I want to take a quick moment to let you all know that I've launched my Patreon. Creating videos has been a lot of fun, and if you'd like to support me directly, then I would greatly appreciate that. There's only two tiers at the moment, a $1 tier that gives you special on my Discord and ad-free versions of my videos, as well as a $3 tier that gives you access to early previews as alongside some other goodies. These tiers also include the obligatory shout out at the end of my videos, you know, YouTube stuff. There's a lot of fun stuff I plan on doing with my Patreons, so I hope to see you there. But yeah, all right, let's get back to our regularly scheduled rambling. So why do I think this is so important? Well, the only reason I'm as attached to the lore as I am is because of a character that only got the spotlight because it was time for someone else to move on. Anduin Rin. As you could probably tell from my Anduin video, I really like him as a character. 
As to why is for a myriad of reasons, but I think a core component is that his first time in the spotlight coincided with when I started the game. Okay, so if you're one of my older viewers, shout out to the 60 plus crowd, I respect the hell out of you. You may want to sit down for this. I started the game in Mists of Pandaria. I was 12 and I just got the battle chest and everything else I needed to start my journey on Azeroth. I joined this world of storied heroes and dragons, and man, I was hooked. And of course, when you have a younger character whose story is very reflective of his age, newer and younger players will relate to them more readily. I related to Anduin's themes and his fish out of our story in Mists. And when Legion rolls around and his story evolves into one about growing up and accepting responsibility, right when I was hitting the latter half of my teenage years, I got to grow up alongside Anduin. And through that connection, I got invested into the deeper lore of the franchise. If it wasn't for Anduin, I wouldn't have started reading the books, watching old cutscenes, or learning about all the other characters. Everyone that gets obsessed with the lore has that one character that leapfrogged them into their addiction. So who do the new players have? Not anyone, really. And if we want Warcraft to live on for another 20 years, we need to start building a revolving door of heroes. What makes this universe special is the world. And if we want to have the depth we need it to, Characters need to be born, age, retire, pass on, whatever. Warcraft needs to have legacy. What's Thrall's legacy? Jaina's? Khadgar's? They don't really have one, because they're still kicking around and pulling up to the raids. What are these characters going to be known for? A giant wiki page? For a comparison, let's look at Varian. His story started in Classic, we have the whole Anixia clone fiasco, the war in Northrend, his handling of the Horde Rebellion against Garrosh, and his influence on Anduin. We firmly remember Varian as a valiant hero who tried his best to be a good father and king, and who lost his life suddenly on the Broken Shore. And because Blizzard put an end to his story, Varian has a solid characterization that isn't muddied by decades of various stories, a lasting legacy for other characters to build on. Would Anduin's story be as fulfilling as it is if he didn't lose his father so suddenly? Heck, if Varian was still kicking around, Anduin would probably still be a baby prince begging everyone to stop fighting instead of the complex character that he is. But I don't think any of this is new information to Blizzard. With a renewed focus on building the groundwork for the next 20 years of storytelling, we can already see Blizzard taking strides to give new characters the spotlight, like the newest patch, 1025, where we see two characters take the reins of Alliance factions. Tess Greymane and Chandra's Feathermoon. While these are characters that have existed for a long time and have a lot of fans, they really haven't gotten the spotlight until now. That's because Tarana and Gen had been figureheads of their people for just so long. Both of these characters were really in need of retirement for different reasons. Tarana has honestly just been through too freaking much. And as she said in Dragonflight, she's tired, y'all. As I've said, some of these characters need a break with Tyrande chief among them. That's why I'm happy to see Chandras get the reins for a bit. And while Chandras has also been there for a lot of these hard times, as an audience, we haven't had her on screen the entire time, so it doesn't clock the same way. As for Tess, she needs to step up because Gen is just a dead-end character now. He's mostly been relegated to just being a surrogate father for Anduin, and kind of ignoring that his own kid exists, which Tess rightly throws some shade his way for. And let's be real, between Hearthstone and the Legion Rogue campaign, people just like Tess way more. She deserves to be a figurehead of Gilneas and get some proper room to breathe. If we want the Warcraft story to be better, we need to start letting go of some of the past. While we all cheer and holler when our favorite characters show up every raid tier, maybe we should take a step back and consider the lasting implications of dragging these old heads around from patch to patch. While Blizzard is the ones in charge of the story, I think we as players have a bit of responsibility too. We should care about the legacy of our characters. Ask ourselves how we want to see these stories wrap up. Should our favorite characters settle down, start a family, or die in an epic sacrifice? Maybe mentor the newest generation of heroes? Because as we all know in Warcraft, you either die the hero, or you live long enough to be a villain. Anyways, this has been Six. Make sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. I'll see you guys next time.